today we're going to explore some more into natural remedies using plants and herbs. This is a subject you can explore on your own by searching natural cures for specific ailments. Always be sure to check on side effects or interactions with medications you may already be taking. I am not a doctor and I am not giving medical advice. Aloe vera. This is a thick, short stem plant that stores water in its leaves. Aloe vera contains various powerful antioxidant compounds. Some of these compounds can help inhibit the growth of harmful bacteria. Applying aloe vera to burn wounds appears to accelerate the healing process. The evidence is inconclusive for other wounds though. When used as a mouth rinse, pure aloe vera juice is just as effective in reducing dental plaque buildup as a regular mouthwash. Early evidence suggests that aloe vera may help with blood sugar management. Ingesting aloe vera supplements in the long term could be hazardous though. Blueberry. Blueberry is a plant People use the fruit and leaves to make medicine. Be careful not to confuse blueberry with bilberry. Outside of the United States, the name blueberry may be used for a plant called bilberry. Blueberry is used for preventing cataracts and glaucoma and for treating ulcers, UTIs, multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue syndrome, colic, fever, varicose veins, and hemorrhoids. Blueberry is also used for improving circulation and as a laxative. Some women use blueberry for labor pains and as a tonic after a miscarriage. The dried fruit and leaves are used for diarrhea. Tea, made from the dried leaves, is used for sore throat and swelling of the mouth or the skin lining in the throat. Health providers have used blueberry juice as a contrast agent in the MRI. Contrast agents make it possible for radiologists to see and interpret the images. Some people have even been known to inhale the fumes of the burning dried blueberry flowers for treatment of insanity. Blueberry leaves may decrease blood sugar. Diabetic medications are also used to lower blood sugar. So taking blueberry leaves along with diabetic medications may cause your blood sugar to go too low. So if you're taking blueberry and you have doing low blood sugar, be sure and monitor your blood sugar very closely. The doses of your diabetic medications may need to be changed. Chamomile. This is one of the most ancient medicinal herbs known to mankind. It is a member of the Asteraceae and Compositae family and represented by two common varieties. German chamomile, also known as Chamomilia recutia, and Roman chamomile, also known as Chamomilium nobile. The dried flowers of chamomile contain many terpenoids and flavonoids contributing to its medicinal properties. Chamomile preparations are commonly used for many human ailments such as hay fever, inflammation, muscle spasms, menstrual disorders, insomnia, ulcers, wounds, gastrointestinal disorders, rheumatic pain, and hemorrhoids. Essential oils of chamomile are extensively used in cosmetics and aromatherapy. 
Many different preparations of chamomile have been developed, the most popular of which is in the form of herbal tea. Cinnamon. This is a highly delicious spice. It has been prized for its medicinal properties for thousands of years. Cinnamon is a spice that is made from the inner bark of trees known as cinnamomum. It has been used as an ingredient throughout history dating back as far as ancient Egypt. It used to be rare and valuable and was regarded as a gift fit for a king. There are two main types of cinnamon. Ceylon cinnamon, known as true cinnamon, and cassia cinnamon, the more common variety today and what people generally, generally refer to as cinnamon. Cinnamon is loaded with powerful antioxidants such as polyphenols. The antioxidants in cinnamon have anti-inflammatory effects, which may help lower your risk of disease. Cinnamon has been linked to a reduced risk of heart disease, the world's most common cause of premature death. In people with type 2 diabetes, one gram or about half a teaspoon of cinnamon per day has been shown to have beneficial effects on blood markers. It reduces levels of total cholesterol, the bad cholesterol and triglycerides, while good cholesterol remains stable. More recently, a big review study concluded that a cinnamon dose of just 120 milligrams per day can have these effects. In this study, cinnamon also increased good cholesterol levels. Cinnamon has been shown to significantly increase sensitivity to the hormone insulin. Neurodegenerative diseases are characterized by progressive loss of the structure or function of brain cells. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are two of the most common types. Two compounds found in cinnamon appear to inhibit the buildup of a protein called Ta in the brain, which is one of the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. In a study in mice with Parkinson's disease, cinnamon helped protect neurons, normalize neurotransmitter levels, and improved motor functions. Cancer is a serious disease characterized by uncontrolled cell growth. Cinnamon has been widely studied for its potential use in cancer prevention and treatment. Overall, the evidence is limited to test tube and animal studies, which suggest that cinnamon extracts may protect against cancer. It acts by reducing the growth of cancer cells and the formation of blood vessels and tumors, and appears to be toxic to cancer cells, causing cell death. A study in mice with colon cancer revealed that cinnamon is a potent activator in detoxifying enzymes of the colon, protecting against further cancer growth. Cinnamaldehyde, one of the main active components of cinnamon, may help fight various kinds of infection. Sediment oil has been shown to effectively treat respiratory tract infections caused by fungi. It can also inhibit the growth of certain bacteria, including Listeria and Salmonella. HIV is a virus that slowly breaks down your immune system, which can eventually lead to AIDS if untreated. Sediment extracts from 
cassia varieties is thought to help fight against HIV-1, the most common strain of the HIV virus in humans. A laboratory study looking at HIV-infected cells found that cinnamon was the most effective treatment of all 69 medicinal plant studies. Not all cinnamon is created equal. The cassia variety contains a significant amount of a compound called cumarin, which is believed to be harmful in large doses. All cinnamon should have the same health benefits, but cassia may cause problems in large doses due to the cumarin content. Ceylon, the true cinnamon, is much better in this regard and studies show that it is much lower in Kumarin than the Cassia variety. Unfortunately, most of the cinnamon we find in supermarkets is the cheaper Cassia variety. Iceland Moss Iceland Moss is a lichen. Lichens consist of algae and fungus growing together in a mutually helpful relationship. Lichens draw their nutrients from the environment and are easily contaminated. They grow well in Iceland because it is one of the least polluted countries in the world. Iceland moss is used for treating irritation of the mouth and throat, loss of appetite, the common cold, dry cough, bronchitis, indigestion, fevers, lung disease, kidney and bladder complaints, and the tendency towards infection. Some people apply Iceland moss directly to poorly healing wounds. In foods, Iceland moss is used as an emergency food source in Iceland. In manufacturing, Iceland moss is used as a flavoring for alcoholic beverages. Iceland moss seems safe for most people when taken short term. It can be unsafe when used in large amounts because the dry plant can, can be contaminated with lead. Iceland moss is regulated in the United States and is only allowed as a flavoring agent in alcoholic beverages. Lemon balm Native to Europe, lemon balm is grown all over the world. It is grown not only in herb gardens or to attract bees, but also in crops for medicine, cosmetics, and furniture polish. The plants grow up to two feet high, sometimes higher if not maintained. In the spring and summer, clusters of small, light yellow flowers grow where the leaves meet the stem. The leaves are very deeply wrinkled and range from dark green to yellowish green in color, depending on the soil and climate. If you rub the leaves, your fingers will smell tart and sweet like lemons. The leaves are similar in shape to the mint leaves and come from the same plant family. Lemon balm, also known as Melissa officinalis is considered a calming herb. It was used as far back as the Middle Ages to reduce stress and anxiety, promote sleep, improve appetite, and ease pain and discomfort from indigestion. Even before the Middle Ages, lemon balm was steeped in wine to lift the spirits, help heal wounds, and treat venomous insect bites and stings. Today, lemon balm is often combined with other calming, soothing herbs such as valerian, chamomile, and hops to promote relaxation. It is also used in creams to treat cold sores. The use of herbs is a time-honored approach to strengthening the body and treating disease. 
Herbs, however, contain components that can trigger side effects and interact with other herbs, supplements, and medications. Lemon balm may potentially interact with the following medications, sedatives and thyroid medications. It may interact with sedatives and thyroid medications if you are taking sedatives for insomnia or anxiety or medications to regulate your thyroid. You should be careful of using lemon balm. Chrysanthemum, also known as mums. This is a plant and it gets its name from the Greek words for gold and flower. People use the flowers to make medications. Mum is used to treat chest pain, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, fever, cold, headache, dizziness, and swelling. In combination with other herbs, the mom is also used to treat prostate cancer. For stomach cancer, early research suggests that taking a combination of mums, licorice, and panax pseudogensine might reverse the development of precancerous stomach sores in some people. As a beverage, the mum is very popular as a summertime tea in South China. Nutmeg and mace are plant products. Nutmeg is the shelled dried seed of the plant Myristica fragrance and mace is the dried net-like covering of the shell of the seed. Nutmeg and mace are used to make medicine. They're good for treating diarrhea, nausea, stomach spasms and pain, and intestinal gas. They are also used for treating cancer, kidney disease, and trouble sleeping like insomnia. Nutmeg and mace are applied to the skin to kill pain, especially pain caused by achy joints, mouth sores, and toothaches. Sage. Sage is an herb. The leaf is used to make medicine. Sage is used for digestive problems, including loss of appetite, flatulence, stomach pain, diarrhea, bloating, and heartburn. It is also used for reducing overproduction overprodu of perspiration and saliva, as well as for depression, memory loss, and Alzheimer's disease. Women use sage for painful menstrual periods to correct excessive milk flow during nursing and to reduce hot flashes during menopause. Sage is applied directly to the skin for cold sores, gum disease, sore mouth, throat and, or tongue, and swollen, painful nasal passages. Some people inhale sage for asthma, For Alzheimer's disease, taking extracts of two different sage species, the Salvia officinalis and Salvia lavendulifolia, for four months seems to improve learning, memory, and information processing in people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. For mental performance, Taking a single dose of the common sage or the Spanish sage by mouth seems to improve memory, alertness, and attention in healthy adults. When used as aromatherapy, these sage species seem to improve alertness but not attention and memory. For cold sores, when applied as a cream containing sage and rhubarb, Apply a cream containing common sage and rhubarb to cold sores may be about as effective as a Zovarax cream. 
The Zovarex cream can heal sores in about six days. It takes sage and rhubarb about seven days to heal them. Sage and rhubarb together work faster than sage alone. For high cholesterol, taking common sage three times per day for two months seems to reduce bad, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol. This is your bad cholesterol. The blood fats called triglycerides and increase the good high-density cholesterol in people with high cholesterol. For memory, taking a single dose of common sage or Spanish sage by mouth seemed to improve memory in healthy adults. However, these sage species do not seem to improve memory when used as an aromatherapy. For men menopausal symptoms, early research suggests that taking extract from common sage for eight weeks improves the symptoms of menopause, especially hot flashes. Also, other developing research suggests that taking a combination of common sage and alfalfa ex extract for three months reduces the hot flashes and night sweats. For lung cancer, people who regularly use sage as a spice seem to have a 54% lower chance of developing lung cancer compared to those who don't use sage. For a sore throat, using a specific spray containing 15% common sage extract seemed to reduce throat pain in people with sore throats. However, sprays containing a higher 30% amount of common sage extract do not seem to reduce the throat pain. Other early research suggests Spraying the throat with a specific product containing common sage and Echinacea for up to five days improves sore throat symptoms similarly to a commonly used drug spray. For pain after surgery, early research suggests that taking common sage along with ibuprofen is less effective for reducing pain after surgery compared to using some of the drugs that they give you like benzodiamine hydrochloride. Also using common sage seems to increase the risk of infections after surgery compared to the benzodiamine. For sunburn, applying 2% common sage extract to the skin after UV exposure seems to reduce the development of the skin redness. Now, sage can possibly be unsafe when taken by mouth in high doses for a long time. Some species of sage, such as common sage, contain a chemical called thujone. Thujone can be poisonous if you get enough. The chemical can cause seizures and damage the liver and nervous system. The amount of thujone varies with the species of plant, the time of harvest, growing conditions, and other factors. Violets. The common blue violet, known as Viola sororia, Violaceae, is native to most of Central and Eastern North America. It is a common sight in lawns, gardens, sidewalk cracks, and along trail sides. The common blue violet is typically considered a weed because of its relative ease of adapting to human disturbance. But it pushes the definition because it has been on this continent for a very long time. The leaves and flowers of the common blue violet, along with many other species, are edible and medicinal. 
The Confederate Violet is an escaped cultivar. It has white flowers with blue streaks and is an inhabitant of lawns in southeastern United States. Now, most fruits of violet species could cause nausea and vomiting and should not be eaten. So, the parts we want to use are the leaves, the flowers, and the above ground parts. Violets can be used to make infusions, syrup, honey, vinegar, compresses, a salve, infused oils. The herbs of this are good for anti-inflammatory, expectorants, alteratives, lymphagog, it promotes wound healing, anti-rheumatic, and a mild laxative. As with any of these natural remedies, always do research on interactions with any medications or any other plants and herbs you may be taking. I am not a doctor. I am simply giving alternative ways of curing ailments that we can find in nature. My personal belief is that chemical medicines can mess up the chemistry of our brain and bodies. All we ever needed is found here on earth. We just have to remember and learn these things again.